everyone, I'm Lori Ellison from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping. In this video, I will show you how to put a loan on the books in your QuickBooks desktop for your income property. All right, let's get started. Okay, guys, let's say you just bought a property and I'm going to pretend that you financed it 100%, which I know isn't possible, but I want to make it really easy. So you're going to need a loan and you're going to need a liability liability I mean and the property which is your asset okay so let's buy a piece of property you're going to say fixed asset okay so that's the property address I'm in the chart of accounts you can go here to list then click chart of accounts or control A. It's also on your home screen. Sorry, I kind of went too fast right there. And then here's chart of accounts. Now you got to make a loan. It says, okay, I clicked it that way, but honestly, they're kind of long-term liabilities. They're not short. I would honestly make it there. And I'm gonna make this a little more complicated. I just was teaching someone and they had an added piece. They had an escrow account. Again, I'm gonna go down to the bottom left, click the down arrow, click new. I'm gonna make the, the um, just because it's easier in some senses, let's make your escrow account a bank. This just allows you to post more easily um, when you post the payments that the bank makes out of your escrow account. We're going to call it escrow 40 railroad avenue okay all right i don't like to teach people how to do journal entries because they're too difficult so i'll show you how to do it right in the register okay so we're going to go to the fixed asset 40 railroad we're going to say i bought it today 100% financing. Just because I'm just trying to show you how to make it easy, easier. I'm gonna pick my loan. Well, actually I'll show you how if you paid 500, 500 with a loan, I'll do the whole thing, okay. Wait, I screwed that up. I didn't pick the loan. So we're gonna go down to mortgage and that puts the loan on. Let's say you did a mortgage for 500,000 and you paid 100,000. You're gonna to go to your checking. I have no checking account, let's make one. Okay, so we're in a bank account. Type in your bank. Wait, excuse me. I'm just gonna put seller. So let's say, you know, it could be your title company, your attorney, whoever you wrote the money to. Could have written several checks. Then I pick the asset. Right, so you had 500,000 come from the loan, you put in 100,000, purchase price 600,000. So see, here we have 600,000, 100 had left from the checking and 500 came from your mortgage. So really the only equity is the 100,000 that you put in because take away the 100 you put in, that it's 500 and you've got a mortgage for 500. Okay. Now, let me create one more account. Usually you've got to pay interest. You 
could call it part of your carrying cost. You could put it in a sub. I'm just going to do. Mortgage interest. OK, so how does that work? When you write a check to Chase Mortgage, right? We've got Chase checking, Chase Mortgage. Control W. I'm just going to make these numbers up so you can see how it works. So let's say on the first of the month. Oh, uh, wait, let me show you something. First thing you want to do, this will make your life so easy. I'm going to move the Zoom thing out of my way. You're in the vendor section. You're going to click the pencil. You're going to go to account settings. We are going to post the loan account as our. So anytime we pay Chase Mortgage, it's going to post to the loan account. Okay. Control W writes a check. You can pick which check is your default. I'm going to say February 1st. Let's say it's $5,000. Let me show you what that does. Well, you can see on the balance sheet, the mortgage went from 500 to 495. But we all know that, especially in the beginning of a loan, most of it is interest. Okay. Go to your loan and break out how much of this $5,000 payment went to your interest and the other piece that went to your escrow. Okay. I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna change this to 131. Okay, so on two one, you can put Chase Mortgage as your payee. And I'm just making stuff up. So I'm going to say $1,500 is interest. Okay. And I'm going to say $2,000 goes to escrow. So then you should pull your amortization schedule out and watch your running balance, right? Because this should keep following what it says after each payment you should end up at. So we posted interest and we posted escrow of 2000. And this could keep going month after month or post all the 5,000. You could do these, these entries at the year end. Um, and this is for landlords that don't want to track cash flow, right? Because I'll show you one other way I do it for one client. And he wants, he doesn't want to do this gap accounting. That's what they call it, gap. It's generally accounted generally accepted accounting principles. Um, this is the correct way for your tax return, but let's talk about what landlords like to do, which is not usually tax driven. The other way you could post your mortgage till year end, then you're gonna have to journal entry it all back. Whole other video. Let's say you're trying to understand your cash flow, And let's say you don't really care about that like one of my landlords tells me, I don't really care about how much is principal and interest. I want to know what my am I cash positive. This is not generally accepted accounting principles. This is landlord accepted accounting principles. Okay, so understand the difference. If you do this, your your accountant is going to tell you you have a lot more profit because the principal payment you make on your properties, on your loans, they are not expensable. This is expensing it all the way so you can tell positive cash flow or negative. Okay, two totally different things. So let's say instead you paid Chase, do it the next month just so I can, $5,000. And instead we don't put it to the loan, which does nothing to your balance sheet, I mean, to your income statement. And we just call it mortgage payment expense. Let's look at the difference on the P&L in the expense piece.
Okay, see the difference? Here, this shows you the $5,000 that came out of your bank. In this one, you only are expensing $1,500. So if you're trying to use your profit and loss to see how well your units are you know, providing cash flow, this is the way to go if you're using QuickBooks for that. Then what would happen at year end? I'll just show you. I'm going to pretend 331 is zero. Well, I can do it. The, the account's going to say out of this, only 3,000 was interest, right? So this is what the accountant would do. He's going to take away all the mortgage. He's going to credit the entire thing. Then he's going to put in here the total interest. And then he's going to put this against your mortgage. The, um, he's going to make an entry like that on the last day of the year. And this will then bring down your loan and post your interest in your, and then mortgage payment expense goes away. So let me show you that. Absolutely. Okay, so it's kind of hard to show it on this, but let's go see here. So it's going to go negative. So now at the total at the end of the year, you're not going to have 5,000 in mortgage payment expense, or five times 12, 60,000. What he's going to do is move it up here into these, into interest and, and then pay down your principal. So it, see how it greatly goes down? So something to think about when you're, I was just training someone and I asked them, what is your goal? Is it, are you doing these QuickBooks to make your tax life easier and you're running your own Excel spreadsheets and you, you just need it right, ready for the account and you don't want to go through another year of hell of you know, the tax return? Then do it the first way I taught you. If you need to know cash flow, do it the second way I taught you. There's really one more part. Um, there's one more part if you have escrow. So I'm going to show you one more part. Okay, so we had posted that payment and money went into the escrow account. So let's say now Chase pays they send the check out of your escrow account and pay taxes. Or something for you. Or how about insurance? Okay, well, let's just do this. We're just going to make money in. And they could also pay your, um, okay, so do you see how that works? You're you're going to track this escrow account just like a bank account. You have to make sure that they, um, especially like when they do, they say you have a shortage and they send you a bill and you have to send extra money in, or maybe at a closing, they made you put in a whole bunch of extra money of escrow. You want to keep track of this balance. So this is part of your reconciliation, at least at your end, that you completely tie this and make sure it works. This will also keep you because if you're doing it the gap way and you're posting your mortgage right, you've got to make sure you post out your escrow account or you're going to lose out on not claiming your tax expense and your insurance expense. And you're going to say to yourself, when you're running the numbers, wait a minute, how come all the money that Chase Bank pays for my insurance and my um, taxes isn't on here? It's because you're not posting your mortgage right. So just remember every time you break out that, you post your mortgage. I want you to not split your check. Your check, I always want it going to your mortgage, all right? Then do the breakout because I, you want to be able to count, like if your payment's 5,000, you want to come into your mortgage and you want to count out 12, the year end. Then you should count out 12 interests and 12 escrows. And then it should work fine. Then go and do the same thing in your escrow account.
There was one other thing I was teaching someone today, and that is if you are classing things, the way I teach you this, so you don't have to learn how to do journal entries, um, is you're gonna have to go back into the transaction. So let me just turn on class. Okay, so if you're someone who's followed my videos about multiple units within an entity or a QuickBooks file, then you're probably classing. So, but when, when let me get back to this, if you're posting into the, this journal entry, these entries that I taught you how to make, there does not give you a section here to add the class. So what you do is you take your cursor here, see that little arrow and you hold it between the two vertical lines and then you double click. It will open the transaction and then you can add a class. So my class would be 40 Railroad because that's the address. And I'd want this here because what if I got another property and I have multiple interest expense, keep interest expense that. Don't make 10 interest expenses for every property, but make sure you throw the class on. The, the payment here is a balance sheet move, so you don't really need to track. But if you're not into bookkeeping and accounting, just class everything. Then you don't have to worry about what needed it or didn't. So see that now has it. Now the 2000 going over, this is a balance sheet move. You don't really need it, but I'll just do it. Okay. But what you really do need to do is your escrows. So, right, this is all for, these are expenses. So you wanna pick 40 railroad because you could have five escrow accounts. But you have to go in the bank account ones out of this escrow bank, you can do the class while you're posting it. But it's not so easy when you're doing it in the register, that would be more if you do control W and you write a check that way, now you, the class comes up at the bottom. Okay guys, I hope I didn't go too fast. Um, so that's how to post uh, a property purchase with a mortgage in QuickBooks Desktop. That's how to account for your escrow money. And also the other way was just posting the full amount to mortgage expense and then planning on someone helping you reverse that into the correct um, gap way at your end. Okay, please um, put any questions or comments in the section below, especially if there's something um, you would like me to make a video on, I'll do my best. All right, have a great day.